So before we start this episode and I tell you how you can still trade whilst you're working your nine to five job, I wanna cover this question and it is from Mr. Big Pips underscore profits forever. I actually just made that up, it's not a real name. But anyway, I get YouTube handles like that, which is really weird. I wanna know how people come up with these names, cracks me up. But anyway, they say to me, Mark, the reason why I'm not profitable is because I've not mastered the lower time frames yet. When I start mastering these lower time frames, I'm gonna be a wizard. I'm gonna, you know, scale up. I'm gonna make the money that I wanna make. They're like, how do you recommend me going forward? I'm like, what the, f the re how I recommend you going forward is understand what trading is. Trading strategy, good risk management, robust mind, emotional regulation. And even when I sit here and actually think about when I say emotional regulation, what does that mean to you? Because I know it's going over some of your heads. What I'm basically saying is stop being an idiot. Stop being a muppet. Stop being a moron. When I say emotional regulation, I'm saying don't let your emotional brain take over and start doing dumb shit. That's what I mean when I say emotional regulation. Because where you go wrong is not your inability to get into profitable trades. I'm going to show you some profitable trades here. It's so simple whilst you're working your 9 to 5 job. However, most of you know how to get in profitable trades and you probably do take profitable trades. The reason why you're not profitable is not because of that. The reason why you're not profitable is because you don't know how to calm the mind down. How you think whilst you're trading will be the reason whether you're profitable or not. Because if you don't know what's going on in your own head, and I bet you've not even gone through it. I bet you don't audit it. I bet you don't actually look or actually write down or have the awareness to realize, hold on a minute. I'm a nervous wreck whilst I'm in a trade, whilst I'm thinking about the trade and whilst I'm looking at the next trade. Hands down, one of your biggest problems. Do your technicals need to improve? Possibly. But from my experience, I've met thousands of traders that are, I would say the technical skill is more than good enough to consistently make money. Not every month, but consistently make money over the year. It's themselves that stand in the way. And they'll stick to their trading plan for a good period of time. And then they'll just have a period where they go completely off the rails for three weeks and they undo all of their hard work. You can't tell me that's a technical deficiency. It's all up here. So you've got to gain control over this. But anyway, so emotional regulation, whatever that means to you, calm the mind. Trading trifecta, I've shared it on the channel before. If you haven't checked it out, go and look at prior episodes. You want to become the well-rounded trader. If you have an edge, who's going to deliver it? It needs to be you. So for those of you that want to know how this can be possible, I actually think the lower time frames are the issue for you. So look what I've got here, EuroCAD, EuroKiwi, and Kiwi Swiss. I don't really trade Kiwi Swiss that much, but I just want to demonstrate a trade for you. So we'll start off with EuroCAD. How could you make this work whilst you're learning and working your nine to five job? Many of you want to escape that, but I do believe the goal shouldn't be to obsess over going trading full time. It should be about, if there's a direct correlation between that you, you keep losing, you're not making money, you're not getting funded, right? The goal is to get you there so you can start making money. Quitting your job, that's a whole other situation that's gonna be dependent on the individual. So let's say that you want to achieve that. What if a lot of your losing trades and the reason why you're not getting there is because you misuse the lower time frames? You probably lack the understanding of the higher time frame narrative. Well, why don't you start taking trades like this? And if you wanna learn how to do that, you know where we are, it's really simple. I launched this recently, H4 Mastery. It's there, it's in the mechanics. You've got everything that you need to understand how to take this. So I'll give you a few examples. This was a recent trade that I took for a three to one, lovely, lovely position. I was actually looking on the lower time frame for this. So I'm gonna give you an idea of how I use it so you can see how you could use it moving forward. So let's take a look at the first trade. First trade is this. We've got this massive structure, big range, whatever you wanna call it. And if we start looking at the important variables, which is this. So you see this low here, it gets taken out. And then we're looking at this next low, and this also gets taken out. So notice how that when we get taken out, what we would be looking for is this, right? So we're actually looking for a natural continuation to go lower at this point. So what we'll do is that we'll mark on at what point does the sell idea, because if we zoom out, high time frame, fill the gap, we're right at the top of the range, we can expect to see this potentially drop out. That's the idea for the high time frame. And the other side of it is that we can get long, but we can only get long once we achieve a certain criteria, which is this structure has to fail. So your edge, from a technical standpoint that I'm talking to you now, is actually in the failure of the first trade idea, which is brilliant, because you know exactly where to look out for. 
So because this trade idea failed, we didn't get a rejection, we didn't get anything that we want to see, we actually had confirmation of the failure, which was not this exact candle, but that was the start of it. And then you get the next one and so on, and then it's already given you the clue. So your entry is actually within here. So how you would have taken that would be really, really simple. Entry there, stop below. There's a few other things. I'm not getting into every detail of the, the strategy per se, but call it a 20 pip stop, and then your target is roughly you know four or 5%. Now you could go tighter, but just for argument's sake, that's the idea. You're playing the range because this is where the liquidity is, this is where the volume is, nice and simple. You can go into some lower time frames and you can see that that's there, right? That was the origin of the move. Sell off, volume accumulation here. There you go, sell off. Price is gonna to snap towards that like a magnet. So super straightforward, lovely five to one. And the probability after this broke out of this structure of it getting there was like 90%. So again, this would be an example of someone showing me, Mark, I closed that at two to one. I'm like, well, more for you. Why did you close it at two to one? You don't understand it yet, and that's fine. But this is where knowledge is power from a technical point. I'm not talking about psychology, I'm not talking about anything else. I'm talking about the understanding of how these ranges work. So now let's go to the next trade. Now I didn't take that trade, that was a mistrade for me, but this one wasn't, this was a trade that I took. So another example, you would have been in, let's say you're working a nine to five job, right? You're taking that London session-ish and you're in the trade, you let it run, you're not doing anything, you're not micromanaging it. You would have been able to stay in that trade for a day or two, right? Some trades are gonna happen within the same day. Some of them, they're gonna be high time frame, but you're still gonna be in and out within four to five hours, that's normal. But some of them give you the opportunity to not micromanage, leave it alone, let it hit its target, and actually just set it, leave it alone, and then within a couple of days, you've hit your target. Those trades are beautiful. This one that I took, this was a bit more straightforward. It wasn't uh, it wasn't the longest trade in the world, but I was more than comfortable with the potential of this running all the way to the lows, which technically we've already achieved 90% of that, but we're not gonna let it pull back to break even and then hope that it still plays out. So this is where risk management and actually having a trading plan that locks in profit is crucial. So another example of no one can tell me they don't have enough time. So this particular trade, I was on the lower time frames. I'll show you here. I'm actually looking for a trade on EuroCAD at the moment. But I was looking for this on the lower time frames. There was th there was almost three ways to enter this. There was my trade. There was uh, after this one hour trade. There was the next one, which was more of an advanced play where you would have been tapped in next point, and then the lower time frame as well. So essentially, at the time of this, I was on the lower time frames because it had everything it needed to be a lower time frame entry. And could I got maybe a ten pip stop instead of fifteen? Absolutely. However, at the time of this, the H four had closed. So that's beautiful. So I've already got the confirmation. So rather than messing around with the lower time frames, imagine you're at work, you can check it, you know when the H4 is closed, you can go, right, I'm gonna check that, check my trading plan, look at all the other variables and go, right, is the higher time frame in? Like you would have already done this prior because you would have seen this ahead of time because you're dealing with the H4 candle. Like this is the six o'clock, the, the prior day. So you would know ahead of time that you're looking for this anyway. So the chances of you missing it becomes less likely. So now you probably understand what I meant, that when we launched H4 Mastery, the probability of you missing trades decreases massively. And of course, with these type of trades, increases your win rate. You're less likely to take a lot of lower time frame trades. You're more likely to be profitable and get to where you want to get to. So as an example, more than enough time, you've got one, two, three. You've got like a whole day of price action of four hour candles. Set your order, go, and then I was taken out here. Could have been even more aggressive with this one, but listen, I'm happy with it. As long as I get a minimum of three to one, I'm happy with that because I know statistically three to one, if you go down some drawdown periods, the, the edge is actually there. This is where people go wrong at one to ones and two to ones. I've never been an advocate of it because only a very small percentage of people can pull it off because when you do go through drawdown, it's very tedious to get out. Then you get, then you account for a little bit of slippage here and there. It's not just gonna be, you know, you lost five and then you need five. No, you need to make much more to even get back to break even. And people don't realize that. So it sounds, you know, really nice and easy, just quick in and out the market for 1% and get on with your day. Yeah, in theory, but in actuality, that's where people spend most of their time in drawdown. Let me know if that's you, if you resonate with that, where you've been that person, where you've focused on one-to-ones, two-to-ones, and you're sitting there in drawdown and it's taking you like four or five months to get out. Very, very painful, boring process. Well, just let your winning trades run. I've told you this on this channel before, like you already take good trades. Allow the winning trades to win correctly. They don't need to win to the pip. Look, this one wasn't to the pip. Look, look how much was left on the table, but still had three to one. And then you guys were showing me the same type of setup and be out on a one to one. I'm like, why? 
Why would you let a trade that has such a high probability of at least hitting a three to one go at one to one? It makes no sense because when you're in drawdown, that's when it's a real problem. So anyway, those are two simple trades, you know, within the same sort of cycle. Forget about all the other positions. Forget about the ones here. I'm just showing you the more simple and obvious ones. And you've got Euro Kiwi, which was uh, for me today. This was a lower time frame entry, but it was also backed by a high time frame entry, which was right up here. So you could have taken that trade, gone to work, set it, left it overnight, and then you probably would have been out for maybe a couple of percent by now. This one slightly tighter just because it pulled back so violently can't do anything about that i'm always aiming for three but listen in your worst case scenarios you might end up with one percent 1.5 let that happens but ideally your average win needs to be around three percent and then you're in a very good position but this one was executed on the lower time frame this morning so as an example what i love about the way that we trade and this is something i covered in the midweek i, I let everybody know about eurocad euro aussie and euro kiwi as the main ones However, when you start looking at the higher time frame, this trade backed by the higher time frame, but also had the lower time frame. But this is simple mechanics 101. So it gives me a competitive advantage that if you're someone who wants to make this work whilst you're working a nine to five job, I'm not saying you only have to take four hour trades. Like you can still take these trades. You just need to be more planned and more prepped. But the reality is you could be in a meeting. It could take a little bit longer. You're not ready. You can't take the trade. And you're like, oh, I missed it. Well, I'm talking for those people that fall into that category, which is like thousands of you. What if you could be more profitable if you just understood how to trade this a bit better this particular way? I would be taking these trades. Like if I was someone who I'm in drawdown a lot, I'm not making money, not where I want to be, at one point I'd go, enough is enough. Maybe why don't I just master this? And if I if I am in a position where I happen to be by the screen or the trade's set up and it's given me enough of a window, I can still take these lower time frame trades, but I'm not expecting the lower time frame to be the whole bulk of my trades because clearly it's just not working that way so why don't you stick to a slightly higher time frame but what is this industry telling you is forcing you into the lowest possible time frame so imagine you're trying to work build up income which is a smart thing to do so you've got income coming in to take care of your bills etc and then you're reinvesting back into funding into education into your mind and making sure you're doing all the right things tick but then you're standing in your own way because you're just giving all of your hard work away because you've not actually looked at your trades and gone, right, if a lot of my losers are on these lower time frames, how about I start to master more of a higher time frame narrative? And then once I'm better and I'm more skilled and I've got the emotional regulation, guess what? I'm going to trust myself to be able to hold my nerve, hold these trades rather than this anxious mind to be like, but I want to be in and out. You want to be in and out because your emotions are all over the place. And if your emotions continue to be all over the place, how do you genuinely expect to hold a trade at 10K profit or even 5K profit? You won't. You'll make loads of mistakes and you won't make money. So do it now. You're not going to figure it out once you're trading 400K. Like You won't even get there because you haven't mastered your mind. However, another trade, nice and simple one. Right, so I was actually waiting for a lower time frame entry, so I just didn't take this particular trade, but I've had a really profitable month. I'm not going to catch every single position, but I'm giving you another example of a trade that you'd leave, again, to the low, over a three to one, so you've got pretty much four to one. I actually think at that point, to be exact, yeah, this would have been a three to one. You managed in that trade, you'd have been taken out here for a lovely three to one. You had more than enough time, you had easily, you had roughly about, 18 to 20 yeah about 20 you know i would say closer to 24 hours to still be able to take the trade no excuses once you understand it and a lot of your noises because you're looking at that thinking oh that's so simple is that easy no this was a simple trade some people took this trade so th this is mapped out away in advance and you're not realizing that a lot of the trades that you could be taking you're missing out on because you're you're so zoomed in so it'd be an example of you're like this you can't even see that because you're here. You're thinking, oh, liquidity, volume, this and this. Like you're, you're putting too much emphasis on stuff that is just garbage. And you'll take something, I'll give you an example like that. You'll, you'll be zoomed in into a profile where your chart's blown up and you'll start valuing, here is liquidity. Like forget the pair, this is Kiwi Swiss. This could be Euro dollar, pound dollar, gold. It could be whatever, Aussie dollar. And you'll go, oh, this has been taken out. Uh, and I see it because people send it to me and they'll set limits here. They get tagged in, in and out. They're like, oh, it's just a loss. Like, no, that was a garbage position. You're too zoomed in. And until you can zoom out and understand where the real volume is, where the irony is, people are looking for where all the smart money's coming in. 
and they're making dumb decisions consistently. The reality is, you just zoom out, look at a high time frame, it's really obvious. That was printed there, right? So this is at midnight, roughly. Yeah, so about midnight, around that time, Tuesday night going into Wednesday. That was there. So it's like, why are you making rubbish decisions in here? Loss. You know, they're not taking a loss around here as well. Like, they're so zoomed in. Like, it almost looks difficult for me to, to find because I physically have to zoom so far in to the point I would just never do it. And I think that is a habit. Oh, there was also a trade here, by the way. That was on the one hour. That was a lovely trade. You had entry one, and then technically you had from here. This wasn't in my time zone, but one, if it wasn't yours, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you still had another four hours to be able to enter the trade. What I'm saying is it just gives you a bit more, more of a dynamic real lifestyle of like if you want to trade and scale up to let's say six figures and you're wondering right how am i actually going to achieve that if i'm missing so many positions well this is how you do it there, there are so many hours the chances are you could look at your phone within a four hour period right i'm i'm confident you can do that and you could look at your phone within an eight hour period and a lot of the times it is two four hour candles so there's an eight hour window where you're not at work stressing thinking wasn't on the five wasn't on the one minute wasn't on a 15 minute i didn't get these trades and you're sitting there scratching and thinking is it really going to work for me is it actually possible and then you're questioning do you actually have a strategy that can facilitate for all those periods well, why do you think i spent so much time working on h4 mastery because i knew that this would be another added layer into what we do so lower time frame trade lower time frame trades they're there they're beautiful like the one that i took today but there's also these excellent higher time frame positions that no excuses you could level up and get to much higher capital allocation in funding with the understanding of this hands down and we're still early to the process so i don't expect people to really start you know fully flowing with it probably towards the end of the year because they would have had enough training from myself and the coaches this will be like second nature and you will see the difference we're already seeing so many more people level up in our funding ftmo and third party capital they're doing it so if you're someone who's sitting on the sidelines still and you don't understand how to do this you need the education like at some point you have to put skin in the game watching youtube tutorials and tiktoks is only going to take you so far you really want to take it serious you've got what we are at yeah like we're, we're at the end of the month we've got like five days left to the end of the month and we're going to be in november guys can you really afford another month and then go december 1st and you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs going i've had a pretty garbage year well no shit. you need to invest into yourself get good education do good structure be around the right people that are building the right habits and start actually mapping a plan not just for now until the end of the year but what does 2025 look like you're gonna have another year where you just coast on by or you're actually gonna get your life together get your house in order and start making this a reality because other people are with the exact same resources that you have or that you could have if you just bite the bullet and go let me invest into me because i back myself if i make myself an asset that's going to come to pay me in the very near future versus how much money are you losing and how much money are you missing out on by not having the correct guidance that's something that most people in this industry they really lack and they don't think about they're just obsessed with wanting to figure it out all on their own and they'll happily waste five six years i haven't got time to waste five six years don't know about you and i didn't i was 18 put my money where my mouth is so i will never I will never ask something of someone that I've not already done myself. Even when I don't come from, you know, wealthy family, I put everything into this. So there has to be a point where you have that moment where you're like, right, enough is enough, all in. And I'm telling you, when you get that energetically, when you're all in, good things start to happen. The universe has a, a very interesting way of just rewarding those people that go all in. And they don't reward people that are kind of like one foot in, one foot out, sitting on the sidelines. Like they're not all in. And you know yourself whether you're all in or not. And that's probably the biggest difference to why you're not leveling up in the first place. So anyway, hope that gave you a bit of education, a bit of an interesting episode. I thought I would just uh, share that with you because that's how simple it is. And that's how people are going to really, really achieve this. So I'm personally super excited from now until the end of the year because I know this will be enough time to have more trades, more experience going into 2025. There's going to be a direct cor correlation of people getting these positions and leveling up on funding. You heard it here. You will see it.